example eight, determine the domain and range of each of these functions. So the first thing that we're going to do in graph A is notice that the graph hits the edge of the graph technically. That means it goes on forever, so please add an arrowhead to graph A. Now the domain is your x values, right? I don't know, however we remember things, domain and rangey, if you put a y on the end of the range. Domain is your x values, your x values are your independent values. So for this first one, when we look at the graph, I like to always think, does it have a smallest x value? Well, because of this arrowhead here going forever to the left and forever down, there would be no smallest value of x. As we go to the right, it does have a biggest value of x. The biggest it ever gets along the x-axis is to 5. So we can write this in set notation. Set notation, we would say x is less than or equal to 5. That's the short form I can write. Probably don't need to show you the long form anymore. You, all you would need to write is x is less than or equal to 5. For your range, oh, I'll do interval notation. In interval notation, interval notation always starts from the smallest value to the biggest value. There is no smallest value, so we would start at negative infinity. The biggest value is 5, and it's included, so we use square brackets when something's included, round brackets when it's not. So on some of the assignments that I'm going to give you for domain and range, I'm going to get you to do set notation for part of it and interval notation for another part to get used to both of them. For the range of A, again, start thinking about what's the smallest Y ever is, what's the biggest Y ever is. And one of the things that sometimes people get mixed up on in this one is they say, oh, the graph ends right here, which is at negative 3. Is that the smallest value for Y? No, because on the other side we have an arrow saying it goes down forever. So it goes all the way down to negative infinity for Y. If we think of what's the biggest value that y ever gets, well, this is the highest my graph ever gets. It's at 2. So if in set notation, I can write all of that by saying y is less than or equal to 2. In interval notation, the smallest value, well, it goes down forever, so it would be negative infinity, all the way up to 2, and 2 is included, so we have a square bracket. So in set notation, we show something's included by having less than and the equal sign together. In interval notation, we show something's included with a square bracket. Yes? No, you would, if it just says determine the domain, you get to choose whichever one you'd like better. Okay? Sometimes it might say write the domain in set notation, then you'd have to know that. Other times, you need to know them both because if, if a multiple choice question said the domain is blah, 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 and it's like, I don't know that notation, well, then that's not good. It's okay just on its own. So here is part, whoa, that's fancy. Whatever. Yeah, let's undo that. Okay. Let's just scroll down and do part B. B, the domain. And again, I'll do it in set notation and interval notation. Is there a smallest x value? Yes. Notice that this graph ends before the edge of the graph. We don't put any arrowheads on this graph. The smallest this value gets is at minus 3 for x's. The biggest along the x-axis that it ever gets is right here at 5. Sometimes, sometimes people use an analogy of like having a big, bright, you know, get a flashlight shining on your graph. There's a nice flashlight, eh? 
and imagining on the x-axis where would the shadow be. If the graph stops the light from shining, I don't know if this, I don't know if this helps or not, but if it would be like a shadow from there to there. Does that make sense? I like to just think and look at my graph and say, what's my smallest x value? My smallest x value is going to be negative 3. What's my largest x value? My largest x value is going to be 5. How do I write my domain in set notation when it goes from negative 3 to 5? Well, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, and x is also has to be less than or equal to 5. And so when x is between negative 3 and 5, we write the x in the middle with less than or equal signs. In interval notation, I think this is a place where the interval notation is quite a bit easier, because interval notation always goes from smallest to biggest. The smallest is negative 3. The biggest is positive 5. There's interval notation, square brackets on both, because both of those points are included. For the second one, for our range, does it have a smallest y value? Yes. Right here is the smallest y ever gets is 3. Is there a biggest y value? Yes. Right here at 7. And so our range will be between 3 and 7 in interval notation. You would write it like this. All right, one more example, then we're going to start a domain and range activity. This graph shows the number of fishing boats, n, anchored in an inlet in the Queen Charlotte Islands as a function of time. There are a lot of fishing boats at 9 a.m. And then what happens? Where do they go? Fishing. I'm a little scared that it looks like there's none coming back at a certain time. It's like they just all disappear eventually. Maybe they stop taking data. I'm not sure. So what is our dependent and independent? Well, dependent is always on your y-axis. And so dependent is number of boats. Your independent is always on your x-axis. That is time. Why are the points not connected? What would it mean? What would it mean if I connected this point to this point? Well, now that means that all of these values make sense in between. Okay? Time makes sense in between 9 and 10 o'clock. We don't just jump from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock and have no time in between. Time flows is continuous, but if we drew this line here, then we have to say that every value between 10 and 25 makes sense for fishing boats. That at some time there's 20.37 fishing boats. Someone just sawed one off and took the other one out. That doesn't make sense. So fishing boats, how could we write this? need to be whole numbers. Don't want to buy half a fishing boat for half the price. Give the domain and range. So when things are single points, we only use set notation for single points, and we just list all of the single points. So if we look here, we have 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I'm going to start <laughs> shortening it because I don't want to do the dot, dot, dot. Are you okay with 16 o'clock? What does 16 o'clock mean? Four. Four in the afternoon, yes. Using a 24-hour clock. All right, so we're going to end there for right now.